Hello my friends, this is Uncle Misha and welcome to Inside Out Electronic Channel. Today we're gonna look at this Harman Kardon DC520. What the heck is that? Is it any good? Is it any bad? Stay with me and you will learn. So what is that Harman Kardon DC520? Everyone knows that Harman Kardon, I'll always try to make a mistake here, produces a lot of, uh, or used to produce a lot of audio equipment and also it does a lot of entertainment system and things like that. So this particular unit was is a cassette deck, as you see, and it was uh, manufactured during a 96 to uh, 2000, so it's not that super, super old or vintage, no, nothing uh, like that. And it is just simple, auto-reverse, double cassette deck. Uh, it has... Um, Two, as you see, two transports here. One transport is as primary transport uh, can do record and play, and this particular transport can do only play. And it features noise reduction B and C, uh, as you see over there, and also um, it's HX Pro, so which is actually pretty cool. So that helps to improve dynamic uh, range of your recording. They claim in official specs it can do 25 hertz to 19 kilohertz with metal tape. It, as you understand, in this case, it supports a, a metal tapes, probably uh, any other tapes. And as because there is no controls here to switch the uh, type, so probably it has auto detect right here, which we're gonna take a look. Um, 75. 79 decibel signal to noise ratio, wow and flutter 0.06%, which is relatively okay for this sort of entry level deck. I think it, I think it is relatively entry level, but because it has uh, Dolby HX Pro, it's kind of above entry level, I think, on my um, books at least, and it weighs almost five kilograms. It's not bad, actually, it's relatively not bad. Deck and it's relatively modern. It has completely uh, computerized control. Everything is looking good and it's actually relatively nicely looking. I don't really like this particular bulge here. I would like to have it straight, but whatever, whatever. So let's talk about controls, what we have straight right here uh, on this deck. So uh, as I mentioned before, there are two uh, uh, transport primary sorry, primary and secondary. Secondary doesn't have a, mm, a record, only a prime, primary has record. So hence this record button is only here. And it's funny that the pause button only is here. So this one doesn't have pause button, which is kind of funny, but whatever. So, but at least all of them auto reverse. So they do, do can go in both directions. The only thing directionality is controlled for a both of them so like for example here is a directionality button so uh, dolby nice reduction of b and c right here head drum extension assign the stand automatically is on always you cannot turn it off i think this is what's going on and uh, it has whatever sync ref sync rewind i assume copy high speed copy rack mute and that's pretty much it. Um, uh, oh, and of course, big input knob, uh, input level knob, and input balance knob, which is kind of funny, but because it's input balance. Yeah, your source has to be input balanced. So what I would like to have is, oh my God, looks like some spiders are already, already living right there. Oh my God, it's like cobwebs in the headphone jack. So what I would like to see actually over here instead of input balance the output a, a, a Adjustment so because this is for my opinion. It's a bit useless, right? So that's pretty much it. So the, the, there is a nice fluor uh, not fluoro um, uh, VL Display VLD right here uh, And I think I see here some kind of infrared sensor. So I don't have a remote So this st story behind this particular deck it was given to me I for free and uh, I never actually had chance to power it on or anything like that so have no idea if it even works uh, so someone just instead of dumping it on the, in the garbage they just gave it to me uh, on the premises that I can either fix it or dump it myself so I probably gonna try to fix it and uh, uh, so doors are soft actually very nicely uh, opening very nicely 
So these bows, they have auto reverse heads, so they rotate like this. So um, uh, that sort of make the whole mechanism a little bit complicated. We're gonna take a look and this or and that one uh, how they look inside. So let me show you how they look inside. So here we are. This is how the primary transport look like. As you see, it's like super dirty. It has two capstans because it can go for uh, one way or another. And here is rotational head. Okay, let's take a look at the secondary. So here is the secondary transport. It has rotational head but does not have record button. Uh, so I was wondering always why they decided to go with rotational heads instead of using four truck heads as in Walkmans. But whatever so this is what we get as you see it's like super dirty here as well so looks like you're gonna have a lot of cleanup going on so as i mentioned before i never actually had chance to plug this guy off and, and see if it works and before i'm gonna put any tape obviously i have to clean everything as you saw how freaking dirty it is but powering up we can do and see if it's i hope it's not gonna blow up okay it has some signs of life and we see right there the level indication okay and we have two digital counters which is awesome not sure if they are real-time counters or not but this is what's going on so let's try to okay there is no indication of reverse there's no indication of noise reduction at all um that's uh, kind of sad because I thought I would see a little bit more like I would see for example Dolby in, will be indicated right here but if you really look closer you can see that there are like a sync ref, uh, CD sync, blank scan, things like that. There is some kind of uh, rack play, parallel high dub, parallel recording. This is awesome but looks like this not supported on this deck. So parallel recording that two simultane decks simultaneously can do recording uh, and that's it and rec play for so rec play for this deck and rec play for this deck all right that means there is an older model maybe 530 or whatever i don't really verse in the models of uh, harman kardon but which would have both decks are rec recordable that's pretty much it let's look at the uh, look at the back and then we're gonna take it to the bench and look what the heck is going on inside so this is uh, how the deck looks uh, uh, on the back, yada yada yada, it, uh, over here there are input and output and power cable. It says model DC blah blah blah, Harman Kardon, Northridge, California. It doesn't really say where this thing was actually manufactured, so this is actually interesting. There is a serial number right here and that's pretty much it. Because in some other Harman Kardon deck it actually say manufactured in Japan. This particular one have no clue with this sort of um, labeling. So as you see, back is pretty simplistic, but in majority of cassette decks, they are pretty simplistic. There is nothing to do unless some of them may have like a remote, older ones may have a remote, wired remote. So what I don't really like that this guy is not plug-in type. So this is just wired directly, which is sort of quite annoying. And uh, I, I really like when you have the plug so you can unplug this cable and uh, but at least the cable itself is polarized uh, as with other uh, older model of cassette deck they are not polarized so there is some improvement in sort of safety uh, standards here we're gonna take a look if this guy at least have some input protection and to see how safe are contacts right here um, because in many many uh, previous decks i show you the main contacts they just like bear uh, you can you can accidentally touch them even deck is uh, is shut down that doesn't really mean that there is the, there are there are uh, uh, there are no power so you have to go and unplug because otherwise you are may subject to yourself to some electric shock which is they actually say here so maybe potentially they, they still this the problem there is bare contacts somewhere uh, around the uh, plug or a, around the power switch all right so we have uh, this uh, cassette deck right here on the bench and as you see on top top is really really good nick it's actually nicely uh, been taken care of it's not that a single scratch except this dust which obviously can be easily cleaned up so 
it's a, this deck is really good uh, Nick uh, after I wiped it with the alcohol and stuff I thought that it has crashes no that, that turned out to be some sort of gunk so whoops now we have to unscrew so to see what's going on inside there are two screws here two screws on this and this side and two on the back uh, two three two here and one right there so I'm gonna unscrew them off the camera and then we will see what this thing gonna reveal okay I was a little bit wrong actually it's only one screw right here on top of it right there and that's it and two others are something oh it's so crammed in here and this bench is a crap all over the place sorry oh here we are it's actually look pretty nice and clean it has some Sony components well actually it has a lot it has a lot of Sony cheapies right here oh mamma mia I didn't didn't expect to see uh, Sony componentry right in there okay let me turn it in a way that I can see it because this thing is really tall and I'm just not seeing all the action here okay let me take my pokey bit looks like the construction of everything is actually nice and modular and also as I mentioned the mains are still pretty dangerous right here so look at this so the, the this arm comes all the way from the from the front go away, goes here and here we are these are definitely under um, mains voltages so these two so there is nothing actually covering this uh, nicely so this is like it's always shocks me how how annoyingly badly this is I don't, I don't think it's gonna be a big deal if you would add some kind of plastic shroud just covering this freaking PCB Ooh, it kills me also I don't see a fuse there's probably a mold right here or something to this extent some kind of maybe filtering cap anyways it doesn't really matter so yeah I, I, I always tempted just to actually myself manufacture some sort of plasticky 3d print some kind of plastic shroud just to put it on just to make sure not me or no nor any other people gonna like shock themselves okay so let's take a look in details what what's going on here so um okay i'll try to i will zoom in just to you know get uh, concentrated on some details looks like the construction of everything is actually nice and modular and also as i mentioned the mains are still pretty dangerous right here so look at this so the, the this arm comes all the way from the from the front go away, goes here and here we are these are definitely under um, mains voltages so these two so there is nothing actually covering this uh, nicely so this is like it's always shocks me how how annoyingly badly this is I don't, I don't think it's gonna be a big deal if you would add some kind of plastic shroud just covering this freaking PCB Ooh, it kills me also I don't see a fuse there's probably a mold right here or something to this extent some kind of maybe filtering cap anyways it doesn't really matter so yeah I, I, I always tempted just to actually myself manufacture some sort of plasticky 3d print some kind of plastic shroud just to put it on just to make sure not me or no nor any other people gonna like shock themselves okay so let's take a look in details what what's going on here so um, okay I'll try to I will zoom in just to you know get uh, concentrated on some details so here we are this is the main board and uh, looks like over here we can quite um, uh, substantial a record equalization this is like resistive network wow it's a whole bunch of different dividers mm, okay and there are two chips from S Sony actually it's kind of hilarious one is i don't even know what the brand is another one is sony so it's kind of assuming these are left and right channel but but like they don't look identical unless they are a equivalent from different company so t MCA. So I have no idea what is this TMC. It's another Sony chip, and this board is Dolby. So this Dolby B and C um, decoder and coder, I assume. So we have NAC job over here, 
and this one is H uh, HX Pro board right here okay over here there is probably the driver board or maybe those are no those are heads so this is um, uh, record and playback amplifiers I assume over here this board doesn't say actually what it is, but I assume that it is. So this is oscillator, 100 kilohertz oscillator for bias. Okay, this is bias circle. And right here, like right over here, we have the uh, race head. This is wire goes to race head, and this thick, thicker wire, like this one, goes to playback and a rec playback record head. And so, um, and for for. Oh, also, probably, not sure who, where is the driver, so it um, also has to be a driver who actually rotates the head, not sure if this is this wire or, or this is just a signal, and yeah, it's probably just a signal. Okay. Um, so what is this, it's just Pro, what is this here? So this is line output amplifiers, so it's probably uh, CPS, I'm not sure what the CPS stands for. Okay, so what else? This is clearly a power supply and you, you uh, barely see it, but you still can see it. And to my big disappointment, the power supply uses YEC capacitors. E I'll uh, take a close-up photo and yuck capacitors are yeah, pretty yucky in my opinion so okay now it's getting harder okay right over here to show you right over here we have second deck so that was for the this deck a playback and record and there is a second deck and this is only playback okay so there is a whole bunch of componentry is missing uh, so uh, from 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 this side of the business so yeah it's uh, it's missing here uh, it's way more a little bit a little bit more going on right there but not too much so I think there is also an, an amplifier for a headphone output that's pretty much it right here on top we have probably left and right side or uh, I mean primary and secondary decks indications of some sort so this is probably indication board and control board as well but I don't see any big cheap um, controller going on here so I'm not sure who does the business logic right here unless there is something which actually hidden behind this panel sitting right together with the whole um, buttons because right here there is no Wait, is it? They mention over here U42, but there is no U42. So the only explanation of that would be that there is a big blob on other side of the PCB. Because I don't see... Yeah, uh, no, it's SMD something. Yeah. So there is big SMD component right under here and this SMD component is highly likely is driving the LCD is actually controlling those two uh, motors and things like that. I will try to actually capture a uh, what the heck is that and also this controller has 4.19 MHz uh, uh, resonator right here. Interesting, there's some kind of test point and it's pretty cool. Now some powers go in here. I assume that's going to be 5 volt because for this is 5 volt required. Uh, or maybe not have to measure that, but this clearly voltage because they go from power supply. And this little part potentially is a power supply side of the business. There's some more capacitors. Uh, so, so looks like we are using here a mixture of Rubicons and Nichicons, but for some reason, for the most critical operation for power supplies, they use these yuck capacitors. Uh, it's mind-boggling, but I mean, if it still works, it still works. The board is in really, really nice condition. There is nothing like no leaky capacitors, nothing. What I see a lot here is dust. I hope you're gonna see that. It's not, not really showing up. But over here is a lot of dust. And over here is a lot of dust. 
a lot of dust as well so um, also you can see the switches so here are um, uh, different types of switches uh, for automatic I'm curious why there are two probably two uh, because for example on this deck it has recording so two for chrome two for metal and just one for playback I think or for, for normal and over here it just one one Oh, it's for playback. Obviously, this deck is playback only, though. Hence, the, the if there is no, uh, so it works like that. This is for metal. This is for chrome. And if both of them are engaged simultaneously, I assume that's going to be for normal. That's how it works. Because normal cassette doesn't have holes in those areas. Okay, so um, uh, there is nothing else to do. So I have to. What I have to do? I have to actually a little bit clean it up. Uh, I'm not sure if I have good access to potentiometers to make, to make sure uh, I'm gonna get rid of crackling. Um, uh, contact seems to be in really good shape. There is no corrosion visible. The belt in the tape mechanism is actually in a really good shape. Uh, so there's nothing I can really say much on this. It's not nothing. There is no melted goo. Typical, uh, you know, the typical sign of uh, degradation. So it looks like this deck. I just uh, zoomed out to see you to show you the whole picture. Looks like this deck is actually in good condition internally. There is no leaky capacitors. There is no corrosion. It's actually nice and clean and pristine. Actually, I'm really happy with that. So I am planning to give it a good sweep with this sweeper thingy, and then I'm gonna clean up heads capstans and things like that because it's super dirty as I show you another video and then we'll see how it plays so all right all right as you see uh, both heads are both heads both a transport this one and this one is nicely cleaned up and looks like when I was cleaning up I test the capstans and they are rotating uh -huh. we'll see how that's gonna fly so now we have our most favorite test cassette Garavi Sokak from from Garavi Sokak. And we're gonna play some tunes from Garavi Sokak. No, let's use the playback only first. I'm gonna use my uh, just regular earbuds. Yeah, it's gonna cut it for now, at least just to, to check if this is operational. In the same time, we're gonna see what's going on right here. Let's go. Unfortunately, because there is no output control, let's play plays pretty quietly. Leto Grozno, yeah. All right. Yeah, plays plays well. Okay, let's stop. Let's play. Oh, oh, it's clanking like no tomorrow. Yeah, plays pretty good actually. Okay. Let's try this side. I don't think they are real-time counters, by the way. They just counters, but four-digit counters. Well. 
I think we have a success. We actually didn't do anything except cleaning up stuff. And uh, I'm not sure, I, I also gonna clean up this guy and some maybe other potentiometers. But there is nothing else to clean up here. It's actually looking, looking really, really good. Maybe this direction mode thing is uh, as well right here. That's, uh, that's pretty much it. It's really clean, really nice looking. Uh, of course, it's yeah, there. It's, it's like, I mean, I don't really like these double deckers because their performance may be like eh. But this one, at least on the paper, claimed 19 kilohertz at a from, on the metal tape. You just don't have metal tape to poke around like this to test it. But yeah, at least on the paper, it actually sounds pretty cool. So now I have to now I have to a uh, um, assemble it. Try to do some recording and see how that's gonna fly. Maybe before that, I'm gonna do quick a speed test for both decks. Let me try to do that.